And Jayla. Jayla. See Sally, she's got your gum. Praise the Lord. I promised her I'd give her another piece, but hey, that's that's why they hang out with me. Not because I'm good, not because I'm nice, but because I have gum. First thing you learn early on. Praise the Lord. Makes you look like a wonderful human being when actually I'm just a briber. Praise God. Amen. God is good. Thank the Lord. Appreciate you all coming out today. Be careful in that parking lot. It's been a mess this week trying to keep up with it. And, uh, you know, when they plowed it, they buried all the access back to the sidewalk, so I had to shovel that out two or three times. And Praise the Lord. Don't you feel sorry for me? I'm just a wreck physically. Praise the Lord. No, God is good, and uh, praise the Lord. You know, uh, just for a little trip down memory lane, uh, I used to always uh, wear glasses in math class because uh, they told me it improves division. <laughs> Speaking of math class, my math teacher called me average. How mean. Average mean. Okay. Backwards poets write in verse. Work with me a little bit here. Praise the Lord. So here's some sad news. A guy died the other day when a pile of books fell on him. But he only had his shelf to blame for it. Speaking of sad notes, rest in peace, boiling water. You will be missed. Okay, you've suffered enough for one day, praise the Lord. God is good, amen, and I do appreciate uh, all the testimonies and sharing with uh, what God has been speaking to each of you, because it does, it always validates uh, what God is doing. I mean, it just, it never ceases to amaze me how we're all of the same spirit, you know, I mean, we're all hearing the same thing, maybe in a little bit different way because of how we think, and, you know, we all kind of approach things from a little bit different way, but... The, the truth remains the same. It, 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 it doesn't vary from person to person, you know, and that's what's so amazing about the Lord. And the fact that uh, we are spirit beings before and above everything else, amen. So I'd like to open this morning uh, with three, three different scriptures, and we'll start, uh, Suzanne, if you would, in Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. So I want to talk about faith this morning. Uh, which is basically what we've all been talking about all morning in one way or another. Amen. And so in Romans 1.17, he says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As is written, the just shall live by faith. All right, Galatians 3 and 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith which ought to just blow up every religious thought we've ever had, but for some reason, it always has a way of creeping back into it. I mean, we see these things validated over and over and over in the Scripture, but because of the, the long-term teaching that most of us have had about religion, it just it has to fight its way back to the surface all the time, and that's why we need to be focused on it. But no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. In other words, nobody's justified by the stuff they're doing. They're only justified by faith in what God has already done. And that's, that's true for everything, from the moment that we get born again all the way through till we step foot in the other domain, in the other yeah. realm. Amen? So Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And again, that's what we were talking about, what we've been talking about here this morning. So there's positive faith and there's negative faith. Both of them come the same way by what we listen to, what we look at, and what we end up believing. And every single day, we live by faith. In fact, everybody does, whether they're born again or whether they're not born again. Amen. The just shall live by faith. So what does that mean? What's the Bible telling us about that? 
Well, faith of some kind is working in our lives, whether we're aware of it or whether we're not. And this goes to what kind of what Tammy was saying as well. First, how do we define faith in general terms? The New Testament word for faith uh, comes from the Greek word, which is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S, which means belief or confidence. So having faith means believing and having confidence in the words that we hear. It's believing. I mean, think of it just here's a simple example. When I was a kid, when we were in school, they did flashcards for math, you know, for adding and subtracting and that sort of stuff. Well, I didn't know. I mean, I couldn't believe in it because I didn't know what it was. Two plus two, so what? I didn't care if, if it was five or if it was eight or any. And I didn't have any knowledge of that. So what I kept seeing, they'd do it every day. We'd have math class. They'd flash those cards up. And little by little, it began to sink in that when I'd see two plus two, immediately I know four. Now, it's because that's what I'd seen over and over and over and over again. And it's amazing how that as you get, as you get older then and you... You just know it automatically. You don't have to get out the pencil and paper or the calculator. You just know 8 and 8, 16, 16, 16, 32. You just, you know, it just goes on. But with somebody who hasn't been exposed to that or hasn't seen that, this is all like Chinese. You know, it's like a, a foreign language or something. And it's, but that's how it works with the Word of God. The more we're exposed to it, the more we receive it without having to rationalize it or, or go through the you know, the, the depth of trying to reason it all out and everything else. It just, we hear it, we believe it. It's ours. It's, it's just the way it works. So it's believing in something that is not seen, though it's already a reality. Amen? And then we speak it, expecting it, until it manifests itself. Now, in a lot of ways, that's prayer. That's what I'm talking about with my grandkids. I say, Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, all that will come after that. And then all, there's a couple of other people that, I pray, that I'm praying for or other situations. I'll bring that up at the time. But the point is this. God, let none be lost. Right. You said that I and my house shall be saved. Now, there's ones I don't know. And some that are just tiny babies that I don't really know either other than I just know they exist. But there's yeah. others that will come. Yeah. Unless, unless the Lord gets here before I leave... There'll be others, and even if he does, there's others being born all the time. We've got another granddaughter who's uh, just got proposed to and engaged, and she's going to be getting married in September, and if things work out the way they normally do, she'll be having babies. So, you know, it's just the way it is. But everybody lives by this definition of faith, that it's, speaking, it's, it's, it's believing in something that isn't yet seen, though it's already reality. How many times do we fear something that never happens. Right. We're anxious about this kid's going to do this or this might happen or some deal with a business thing or some whatever, and we get worried about it. It, ha it hasn't even happened. It hasn't even come up yet, and yet we're fearing it yeah. and ma basically confessing things that we don't want. But that's still faith. It's, it's, it's what faith is. So everybody lives by that definition, and people usually get exactly what they have faith for. Why? Well, because men and women were created in God's image. Heathens. Unbelievers. They were created in the image of God. They have a spirit, right? And so everybody actually operates this way. We operate the way he does. And that is through words of faith. The heathen don't know it. The unbelievers don't know it. But it, it, it's irrelevant whether they believe it or not. It still is what mo it's still what drives their life. It's still what brings about the outcomes that they deal with. Psalms uh, 33, verse 9. So we were created in His image, so we do it, whether we understand it or not. It's naturally supernatural, or it's supernaturally natural for us to behave that way. For He spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. That's our Father. That's His way of working, Right? All right, Hebrews 11 and 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So God created by believing in the reality of what he would create before he saw it manifested. God not only spoke words to create things, 
but he even uses words to keep the whole universe running. He started it that way, and he maintains it the same way, which would be a, a way for us to, to say what I just said a little bit ago, and that is we got born again, or we were created this way. And so our life should then consist of this same kind of behavior because that's what God did. He created it all, and then with words, and then with words, he sustains it all. So that's how we're supposed to be living our lives the same way that God does. Amen? So look again here in Hebrews 1 and verses 1 through 3. And he makes it really obvious and clear to us if we weren't constantly hung up with the religious rituals and behaviorisms and all that stuff that we're dealing with most of the time. So God, who at sundry times and in divers' manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high, exactly what Don was talking about earlier, which is where we're supposed to be. In fact, it is where we are, yes. truthfully. Amen. So God sustains everything by the word of his power or the power of his word. When you have a need, when you have uh, something you have to have or, or a situation that has to be dealt with, you have to start speaking. And you have to speak to it as if it already exists. In other words, if you need healing, you need to talk as if you're healed. Yes. Right? I mean, if you, have, if you have a financial need, you need to talk like you have more than enough. Right? Yes. If you've got a relational issue, you need to talk like those are restored. Everything is whole. Everything is made right. That's the way we're supposed to be operating. So... Uh, in order for that thing to manifest, you've got to be talking about it. You have to be speaking in agreement with the promise that you're after. Right? Now, we've been given an inheritance from God. Jesus ha is, the, is the inheritor, right? He's the express image, uh, has purged our sins, set down the right hand of God. He's upholding all things by his word. The scriptures before said that he is the inheritor. It's his inheritance. Well, we are in Christ, so we are joint heirs with him. We have the same inheritance. It's not a lesser inheritance. It's the same thing that Jesus had. Amen. So we've been given this from God who has the title deed. It's all his. Everything is God's, right? Nothing exists except by God. So here's what the devil does. Through deception, the enemy has stolen Right? He comes to steal, yes. to kill, and to destroy. Yes. That's his purpose. That's the only reason for him even being out there. Yes. Right? All right, so look at this in Joel chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. So we've got an inheritance. We've been given that inheritance. We already have it. But the enemy, the way he tries to take that from us or keep us from experiencing it is through deception, yeah. is through distraction. Amen? Yeah. And so... Harry, Joel, in the book of Joel, he says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. So here's what God is telling us. We can appropriate the promise that says everything the locust has eaten, everything the enemy has stolen, every, anything he has taken from you, anything he has deprived you of, yes. he loses. Yes. Amen? Because if he steals from us our inheritance or tries to steal our inheritance, then God has given us this inheritance, and because of that, he will multiply it back to us. Yes. Yes. How? Yes. By speaking it. Yes. Praise the Lord. If you expect it, it'll come. Amen? And if you don't, it won't. It's that simple. Yeah. Romans 10, verses 6 and 8. I don't want to read verse 7. It's an unlucky number. No, it's just not pertinent. All right, Romans 10, verses 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. The righteousness which is of faith talks like this. But what's, what does that say? What does it say? 
The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That was Paul. And he said, the word is, you, it's close. You're, you, you have access to it. Amen. And that is the word, amen, that goes into your mouth and into your heart. That's the word of faith that I preach, that I'm preaching, Paul said. So the word of faith, that word that he's talking about here, the word near or nigh thee, has to do with what you listen to. You have to be close enough to hear it, right? That's why he means by being near. It's, it's, it's close enough that you can hear it, right? So listen, <laughs> this is going to upset some people probably, but I don't mean to do it that way. But How about the TV? Words of faith. I mean, words that create the raw material for your belief are near you, near enough that you can hear it. And so the same is true when people talk to you. That means people next to you and around you are influential. Even if you don't particularly agree with them or don't like them, they can influence. They can have an influence on you. What they say goes into your ears. God has given us his ability, this creative expression through words, just like God created the world with his world, with his words, right? So he's telling us we create our world with our words. Every word is a word of faith. Faith is active belief, either in a positive or in a negative. So it's believing combined with expectation and action. Now, I don't want to get overboard in this, but Don and I were talking about the military, another grandson going in the, into the service, and bless his heart for that, and God bless him and protect him and keep him. But here's the deal. What the military does, now I've only been in one, but I've had a brother that was in the Army and two bro uh, another brother that was in the Air Force, and they all operate by the same principles, and that is... They're trying to teach you to believe in yourself at a level that you didn't believe before. In other words, you can do this. We were talking about boot camp. And, so, and that's really what a lot of this is about. It's belief combined with an expectation of growth. So they're telling you, you're going to do this, and you're going to do this, and the other thing. And when you're first there, you're thinking, that, that ain't going to happen. I can't do it. I, I've never been able to do that in 30 seconds or a minute and a half or whatever it is. But they're going to keep driving you and pushing you until you actually do it. And then you go, oh, wow. Maybe there's some other stuff that I can do that I didn't think I could do. So it's, it's, it's building you up. It's building up your expectation, yes. not only for yourself, but for others that are around you. Amen. And, and then you act on it. You act, and that's so that when they get you into combat and they say, take that hill, you don't go, oh, my, I mean, there's a bunch of people up there. they got guns and there's only 25 of us. Or what. No, you think you're going to be able to do it because they've shown you over and over and over. You can do stuff you didn't think you could do. We're going to give you the right tools and just go do it. So it motivates and it causes you to do things that otherwise you would have never done. If you just took somebody out of the, off the street and threw them into a combat, they may do very well. They may be relatively brave people. This isn't about bravery. It's about, it's about knowing. So you don't have to be brave if you know you can whip the enemy, right? You, you just got to apply the things that, God, that uh, they've taught you. And that's what God is doing. If you expect to fail, you'll fail. I, I can almost guarantee it. If you think, I, I mean, you've been around people that are just so, de, you know, yeah. so negative. Yes. And you wonder, why? Yeah. Because something negative happened, and they just begin to repeat the cycle. You even see it in marital situations. Sheila and I were talking about this, but we've all seen this. And I'm not speaking to any specific there, but I'm just saying, negative things have a way of repeating themselves. You get into negative relationships, and... The, you find yourself in another one. Not, and listen, I know. I've been, I've been in a bunch of them. And it's, and it's by your own choosing. You don't even think about it. You're not really concentrating on it. But it, you, something motivates you to repeat the behavior, even though it was negative, right? And so this is what God is trying to get us to understand. If, you, if you're thinking, I fail, you will fail. I promise you. And that's, again, what the military is trying to do is to get that mentality out of you that we can do basically what the scripture says all things through Christ yeah, I'm in the Marine Corps for crying out loud you know come on let's get real we know they get their butts kicked too yeah. 
But it's the idea that I have this, this belief yep. that I can do things that I couldn't do before. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And that's what he's trying to do. But this isn't pie in the sky. This is reality. This is the truth. Yes. This is how God operates. Amen. So look at this in James chapter 1 and verse 19. James 1, 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. And we've all heard that old cliche about that's why you have two ears and one mouth. You should listen more and talk less. But the truth is, in other words, we talk too much about the wrong things. And we listen too much to things that are negative. That's the overall principle of how faith works. Now, I know you can be a... You know, you can go overboard with this, which is what I do, and that's why I don't watch the news or anything else, and Sally gets uh, aggravated with me. But I am like Tammy, a little OCD, so once I get started down a path, it's hard to, you know, deviate from that thing. But that's why I don't. And it isn't that I'm not interested. It isn't that I don't care. It's just that I don't want to hear all that crap. All it does is upset me. It makes me angry. It makes me mad. And I have no way of venting that because I can't go up and slap any of those people around that need to be. Right? I mean, you're just stuck with their stupidity. Yeah. And they're all that way. And you just, you know, it just makes you crazy. So I just try to ignore it. I just try to not be, uh, you know, uh, affected by it or, or Im impressed by it. But look, look at the qualifications here that Paul gives. He, if you go back to, he, he's telling us, here's the qualifications that you need. And it's uh, in Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Let's just go there for the sake of making sense out of this. Slow to speak. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So Paul said the word of faith that he wanted to plant in the believer's hearts was the one that he was preaching. Right? The one that God gave him to preach. Mark eleven twenty two, and this is how this is the progression of the thing that kind of impresses me. Jesus answering saith unto them, "Have faith in God." So what you know what it's saying to me is what you hear creates faith for what you're hearing, right? The original Greek word there is translated. Have the God kind of faith. Have faith in God. But it's actually, the, the literal translation would be, have the God kind of faith. Mm -hmm. Not have faith in God, but actually have the kind of faith that God uses, right? Well, we have that because we've all been given a measure of faith. Where did that faith come from? It came from God. Otherwise, we'd have never been able to believe for salvation in the first place. Well, that sets us up for everything that's, that comes after that. All of our inheritance, in other words. So if we are to operate the way Jesus does... We have to have the God kind of faith. And faith comes by hearing, and it continues to come by hearing. And we need to realize and be aware that there are other kinds of faith around us besides the God kind of faith. But they work the same way. Getting the God kind of faith. The word is near you, he said. It's in your mouth and in your heart. So he's telling us how we get this God kind of faith, right? And the heart here that he talks, it's in your mouth, it's in your heart. The heart here that he's referring to is your subconscious. Right? Don talk about wake up in the middle of the night. I don't know if it's an age thing. I do the same thing and have, you know, for a number of years now. And it is. All this stuff comes back to you, and some of it's positive, but a lot of it's negative. And then you just have to work through it, you know, and you start looking to God because there isn't any other distraction there at the time. So you can actually look to God and focus on God and begin to... <laughs> Let him deal with it and begin to speak to you about it. Amen. So it's, it's, that's kind of the way God works. He has to find you in a place where he can get your attention without you being distracted by everything else. Amen. And so here I'm talking about where he says it's in your mouth and in your heart. He's talking about the subconscious mind. It's where you store everything that you have listened to. I mean, there's stuff in there that we don't even remember. Right? And then, but it's there nevertheless. And it can come out any time. Yeah. Anything can trigger it, you know. Yeah. So what comes out of your mouth creates your world. 
just like it created this world for God. It creates my world and it creates your world. Because you're just like God, what you say has the power to happen, to actually manifest. Yeah. Amen? So we have to remember that because it's the biggest test of your faith. What you're saying is what you're going to get. Yeah. Amen? Because what you're saying is what you actually believe or you wouldn't be saying it. Yeah. So what do you say in the midst of trouble? Tammy talked about it. When we all know something happens immediately, generally we rationalize or we yeah. begin to try to sort things out and figure it out. And Okay, well, what would I do and how will I do it and all that. And the truth is we, we need to be so have such faith in God that when the tragedy or the, the chaos takes place, our, our immediate response is, God's got control of this. God's got it. It's okay. I'm blessed coming in. I'm yes. blessed going out. Blessed in the field. Blessed in the store. Whatever it is, God's got yes. me. You know, he's, he's covered me. Praise the Lord. So what, what do you say when things aren't going the way you want them to go? What you've been hearing. Praise the Lord. What you've been listening to is what's going to come out of your mouth. That's why the assembling of yourselves together is so important. Because we're hearing what God is saying to each one of us. And it, not only does it give me revelation of what, what he's saying to you, but it validates what he's saying to me. It makes it more real to me because it's not just something floating around in my head. There's other people receiving the same words and the same uh, revelation from God. That's what makes it so powerful. It, yes. it just it reinforces what it is God's trying to tell you. That's why we need it because, as Tammy said and others, if you don't, the devil's right there to steal it. Yep. He comes for the word. He comes to steal the word because he knows the word is where the power is. The word is, where, is what rips his world away from him yep. and makes it the kingdom of God. Yep. Praise the Lord. So what you've been hearing, what you've been listening to what, is what comes out of your mouth. The word of God in your heart will feed you. It will nourish you. So when you experience trouble, the word is what will come out of your mouth and you'll create what the word says. See, Jesus said, now we, somebody was talking about the manna this morning. Who, but see, the manna, Jesus said, I was the true manna. The word of God was the true manna. Your fathers ate it and they died. Why? Because they didn't mix any faith with it. They had the word of God. But they didn't mix faith with it. That's why they didn't enter into the promised land. That's why all those things happened, all the negative stuff happened. Why? Because they were saying what they were hearing negatively instead of what God was saying. Yeah. And they ended up getting exactly, well, you bring us out here to die? Yep. Some of you. Those, those that are believing that's what you're out here for, right? A whole generation died out there. Why? Because they didn't believe what God said. They believed the circumstances, and they let those dictate and dominate them. And God had to let that whole generation die off to get to a, a pristine group again who weren't being dominated by, there's giants over there, didn't you hear? We've seen them. They're this, they're that, you know, and, and they're, they're all hearing that, and they're going, okay, yes. giants, we don't want any part of that. Those are giants. Well, but God said, God said, but I saw. I know what God said, but I saw giants. Yes. Right? And that's kind of the, uh, the argument that goes on with us. Our spirit is saying, by God has said that all things work together for good to them that love God. But I'm seeing some crap that isn't going away and it's getting worse. And you know what I mean? So we, we get into this conflict and we need to be continuously yes. hearing the word of God because the other stuff's coming all the yes. time too. And it's what you end up yielding yourself to is what you end up becoming or getting. Praise the Lord. So what do you say when there's trouble, when there's problems? You say what you've been hearing. Yes. But the word of God in your heart will feed or nourish your spirit, man. Amen. So that it can rise up and do what only the spirit can do. And that's behave and act as though you were God or in God's stead. Amen. Yes. Romans 10 verses 8 and 9. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, and even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. If thou shalt confess. Now see, the word is nigh you. Now I know he's talking about the word of God. But the, it's true of any word. It's all around us. We know we're exposed to this stuff all the time. How many, you ever turn on a TV show and it's something, and I'm not, you know, I don't freak out completely because somebody swears on TV. But some of it is just disgusting. I mean, it just it makes no sense. I mean, there's no reason for all this filth. It's just like they can't, it's, it's, 
accentuates the, the show or somehow brings some, you know, level of uh, honesty or something to it. To me, it's just, you know, come on. We, I don't really need to hear this crap over and over and over the F word a hundred times and, you know, in a sentence and you're, what? Because that word, it affects you. I mean, it has an impact on you. And so the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That's the word of faith that we preach. That's the word of faith that he preaches. But the word of faith that the devil preaches or that the world preaches is just the opposite of this. Yeah. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Yeah. You know, it's Murphy's Law. It's actually the devil's law. Yeah. Anything you can think of that could happen negative is what's going to happen. You know, I just know it always has happened over and over. You know, that's what, where the enemy ends up taking us. But if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised you from the dead, you'll be saved. Yes. That's how we're saved, by confessing what the Word of God says. Yes. You know, I'm, when I'm praying and for grandkids and so on and so forth that I've talked about a couple times here this morning, I can't tell you that the thought doesn't come to me that how in the world can you expect, mm -hmm. look at the world that we're living in now. You know, how in the world will future generations even have a hope of coming to know God? You know, I mean, th that's the thoughts that go through your head. And I'm not saying those are true. I'm just saying that's the fear. That's the anxiety that, you know, there'll be some out there that I'll never, that the connection won't be made like it's supposed to be, that the chain will be broken rather than continuous, right? And I, hate, I don't want to think of anybody going to hell. It's certainly not any of my blood, no, none of my family, right? So... That's the thought. That's the fear that comes. So you have to come back to the Word of God and say, but me and my house will serve the Lord. I and my house shall be saved. I'm, yes. I'm going to say what God says even if I'm uncomfortable saying it. Because it's the only way that this is going to come to pass. Amen. It won't come to pass because I hope all of my offspring and future generations are saved. It'll happen because that's what I'm declaring. That's my blessing on them on the future and I have a right to that. That's right. Right? So... Believe and, and confess with your mouth, and it'll be done. Yeah. Just like you got saved, everybody else can ha have the same experience. Amen? Some people have a problem with, well, okay, I confess it, but I don't feel any different. Feeling's got nothing to do with it. He never said, confess me, and you'll feel like a million bucks. No, there were people confessing and getting their heads cut off and set fire to, right? So it isn't, it isn't about, it's a feel-good thing, although... It, it does give you encouragement and bless you. But the truth is, there can be negative aspects too. And if you're going only by feelings, you'll bail in a hurry. I guarantee you, you won't be in this very long. Because crap happens to everybody. He said, in this world, you're going to have tribulations. Well, if tribulation is enough to drive you away from the Lord, it'll do it. The devil will see to it. He'll give you enough tribulation to cause you to just fold tents and, and take off and leave. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's the error. The Bible says, believe and speak, yes. not feel. Yes. One of the problems I've had with Pentecost, and I'm not, I mean, I love the message, I believe, but a lot of it is about emotion. A lot of it is about feelings. Yes. Right? I mean, because we get into a service and we start to feel the, the anointing and we're feeling the presence of God. And, the, and then pretty soon the next thing it is, if I don't feel that in the next service, I'm not going to get anything from God. Yes. Did you feel, and I've been, in, I've been in a lot of them too where people come out and said, wow, what a service. What, what did he preach? I don't know. That was a wild service though, praise the Lord. We really danced and flipped and flopped. And I'm not against any of that. I'm just saying, Pentecostally speaking, it can become more important than the word itself. It can become more important than the relationship we have with God is what am I feeling? Did I feel anything in that service? Then if I did, then I'm, I'm hyped at least for a couple hours till after lunch until something negative happens. But that isn't what he's trying to get us to understand. He's trying to get us to believe the word in spite of what you're feeling, in spite of what your senses are telling you. The word is still the truth. That's what will change things. 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verses 1 through 3. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away under these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So, that first two verses is basically the world that isn't born again. Where we were before we got saved. <clears throat> we were Gentiles. In other words... We were 
un separated from God. Carried away under these dumb idols, even as you were led. How were we led? By the enemy, by the things that we were around us, the way we were raised, the, the, the people we ran with, the, you know, all those kinds of things. We were led, led astray by them. So he said, I want, to, I want you to understand that nobody who says by the Spirit of God can call Jesus accursed. Amen? That's why it's, you, have you ever had, had a conversation with somebody who says, well, you know, I just don't believe I don't believe in it. And you, no matter how much rationale you use, no matter how much scripture you use, they don't believe. They just, I, I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Can't believe it. Doesn't make sense to me. That's why if, if they were to say, I believe this. See, they're not going to say that unless they believe it. Not if they're led by the Spirit. And the only, nobody comes to God except by the Spirit. Right? So he's saying... This is a spiritual act. It's a, it's, a, it's a, when you say, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sin and that God raised him on the third day. Amen? Now, you could say that and not believe it, but it's not likely that you would say it unless you believed it or wanted to believe it. Right? So that's what, that's what he's talking about here. So you're saved by confessing Jesus is Lord. And you can't, you can't fake it because it's by the Holy Spirit. Romans 10, uh, verses 10 and 11 again. So here's uh, kind of my deal. I, I went to a summer camp with a next-door neighbor kid. I mean, we went to church as a kid and went to Bible school and stuff, but it wasn't a church that taught a salvation message. It was just you just behave yourself and you know, basically the Ten Commandments and don't do the stuff the bad people are doing. And, but they never gave you, you know, you got baptized, but it was into the, that local church. And it wasn't about uh, being born again. They never used that expression. It was just, just be better. Don't, don't be so naughty, you know. So my, my neighbor, my next door neighbor, they were Church of Christ. And they used to have a camp down in uh, southern Iowa. I can't remember now exactly where it was. But anyway, it was on a lake. <laughs> And so I, you know, I wanted to go to the lake, so I went to the Bible camp. I didn't care about any of the rest of it, but I wanted to go for the swimming and fun. Well, they have it every night. They'd have an altar call. And I felt like, you know, I want this. You know, I mean, really, as a kid, I was only, I don't know how old, 10 years old or something. But I wanted to be saved. I, I didn't know what it was all about. I didn't understand it all. So I went to the altar, and I prayed the best that I could pray and wanted to be born again. I didn't feel a thing, except a little awkward, you know what I mean? And so they, you know, they're saying, oh, you're Bob, was this, Bob Clark was the kid, we were neighbors, same class in school and stuff. You're, you're born again, you're born again. And I never argued with him, I just didn't believe it. Because I didn't feel anything, nothing changed. I mean, I went home and everything was the same and all the stuff was, you know, all, nothing, nothing really changed any. So I was convinced that for whatever reason, God didn't want me either because I didn't know enough or because I was faking it. You know you know how your head starts playing games with you and did you really mean that or didn't you mean it or, you know, all this stuff. Just a kid. So he said, with the heart man believe unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto sal salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So here's what time uh, kind of helped me to discover. If you connect that scripture you're confessing the Lord. If you keep confessing and believing, you won't be ashamed of the confession. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, it took years. Now, I, I believe I was probably saved that day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I didn't feel anything, and so I didn't respond as though I were saved. I just went on doing the crazy stuff that I'd done and worse. <laughs> but mm -hmm. if you keep confessing, because this is what happened when I got received the baptism of the Holy Spirit years later when I was in 30s. And uh, then I kept confessing. I kept saying what God said. Now, I was still trying to do a lot of stuff that I thought I was obligated to do. But the truth is, I went back to what the Word said. You know, confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. Yes. And God will fill you with the Holy Spirit and blah, 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 blah. So I just kept on saying, whenever I'd have doubts, whenever I'd screw up, whenever I'd fail, I'd say, but God, you said... I believe. So I'm, again, like Don, I'm, I'm confessing, you know, every screw up that I make practically yeah. and 
which left little time for anything else, but still, that was kind of where it was. But I kept saying that I'm saved. I know what the Word says, and I'm saved. So that led to a, to a more uh, interactive relationship with God where I didn't feel as much fear, where I didn't feel as much you know, rejection and so on and so forth from the Lord. So uh, people... People would laugh at you. They did. I remember coming. I, I remember talking to my mother on the phone after I got saved, or after I received the Holy Spirit, and uh, she's thinking, well, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, she just, you know, it's like doesn't make sense to her. I mean, she was a Christian woman, but knowing me and then knowing what I was trying to explain to her didn't make any sense to her at all. So, and then my older brother, who was a cop for forty some years and a, a, a good, decent person and a Christian. And when I tried to share with him, <laughs> he just basically laughed at me. Like, you know, who do you think you're kidding? Come on, I know you. You know, I, I know your crap. You know, I know what you, <laughs> I know your kind of stuff. And it was devastating. I mean, it really hurt me. It really made me upset that they didn't believe it, you know. But people can laugh at you, but not, not when the manifestation begins to appear. The same ones that are laughing will be wanting to share it. You know, give me some of that, right? And it's the same way with when we're confessing healing and, and the doctors and everybody else saying, no, oh, no, no, come on, they, people die of this every day and there's no cure and blah, 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 or the finances, there's no way. You're, you're, you're going to get a third job now? What are you going to do? Yeah. But you keep confessing and all the time they're laughing at to your face or behind your back. What is wrong with these people? They're nuts. Until the manifestations begin. And once that, it shuts them up because now they're seeing there's something more to this. this. He can't do that on his own. I know he couldn't do that. I know he wouldn't do that. But somehow it's happening. It's got to be God. It's got to be something beyond that individual's ability to produce it. Amen? And so, praise the Lord. Uh, Ephesians 5, uh, 25 through 27. They'll laugh. They'll mock it. We know that they do. I mean, come on. Just I remember, I think it was Don was talking about here a while back. Somebody had their house up for sale, and they were Christians, and they had Christian signs. They come in, and the people, are, they're laughing at it. They're, they're, don't, we don't even want to see that stuff. Come on. But if they knew that person intimately, if they knew those people and saw and could have seen what God had done in their life and the things that God had manifested in them, they'd stop laughing and start wondering, oh, there's something to this that I ought to be looking into, right? So husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he may sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he may present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. Now, we know that is where we are right now and, and as far as God's concerned. He said our sins have been washed away. They're white as snow. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. That's how God sees us. The problem is that's not how we see us because we're taking in everybody else's opinion, including our own, and not God. So he says, but so that he, we, we do this by the washing of the water of the word so that he can present it to himself. Perfect. Right? Perfect. This is perfect. Anything other than this is imperfect. That's why he uses the word of God to perfect us. Amen. In Scripture, the water is used as a symbol of the Word of God. In fact, he, he uses it right here in that way. That he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the Word. So it's the Word. The Word is used uh, synonymously with water throughout the Scripture. In fact, in Psalms 1 and 3, it says that a tree that is planted by streams of water is healthy. And it will produce... Amen? It will yield much fruit. Mm -hmm. In fact, let's go look, look at this in uh, Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3. And why does it yield fruit? Why is it healthy? Because it's near the water, and it can draw water by its roots. Same thing Jesus is saying when he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you abide in me, you'll bear much fruit. You don't do anything to, to bear the fruit other than to abide in him, the word, Right? So blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now listen, this is exactly what we've been talking about. Who's not listening to the lies of the enemy and to the world. Yeah. Counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law, or in the word of God. And his, his law doth he meditate day and night. Verse 3. And he shall be 
That's the person who is like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now get this. He's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So he's drawing strength, or he's drawing from the word of God. Amen. And that word of God will bring forth his fruit, or all that he's supposed to be doing or, or uh, revealing in the earth, in his season. This is be our season, amen, while we're here. And his leaf, that's our physical man, amen. It won't weather. It's kind of like, and, and, and you rise up on wings of eagles and, yeah. you know, you'll be renewed yeah. in the spirit. And they'll walk and not faint. Yeah. They'll run, or they'll walk and, and not faint and they'll run and not fail or whatever it is. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's by the word. It's by the word. And so his leaf will not weather and whatsoever he doeth will prosper. Why? Why will it prosper? Because you're saying what God says. Physically, financially, in every area. Praise the Lord. Ephesians, uh, no, no, never mind, let me go back to that. So in the same way that this tree by the water, drawing uh, strength, amen, through its roots, in the same way, we have to stay connected to the Word of God. Praise the Lord. It's so that God can flow continuously yeah. into your life. Now, here's what I'm saying. I'm not telling you don't watch TV. I, I mean, you're going to do what you want to anyway, and that's not my job. I'm just saying, for me, it's hard enough for me to stay focused on what God has said without having the constant uh, rebuking of that word coming from the TV. Or coming from people who don't know what I know. who People who are unsaved. They may have a higher IQ. They may have more education. But they don't know what I know. David said, I'm wiser than all my teachers. Why? Because he believed what God said, no matter what anybody else said. Praise the Lord. And so, in the same way, we have to stay connected. Everybody who's been laughing, amen, at you and your trust in God is going to have to see your fruit. That's the reason for it. That's how, that's how else are we going to draw them if they, if they think we're just the nuts, right? right. We can live in, in a society, and we do, yes. that is filled with depression. It is. Frightened people. Negative people. Yes. Except for us. Right. You know how I know we can do it? Because Jesus did it for 33 and a half yes. years. Yes. A world full of negative. Yes. The people around Jesus were all that. Yep. But he was saying, be of good cheer. Yeah, right? Fear not. Yep. And they're going, are you nuts? Yep. This is horrible. This world. The Romans, they're after us all the time. They, we never get a break. And Jesus is saying, it's cool. Be of good cheer. When you express faith, some people are going to say, you're just not dealing with reality here. You're not facing reality. Doctors will tell you, I've seen this. I went to school for this. I know what this is. And you're saying, no, by his stripes I'm healed. And they're saying, you're delusional. Unless it's a Christian, right? And actually, though, the person not living in faith to what God has said is not living in reality. Exactly what Don said. This is the facade. This yeah. is the dream. This is the temporary. Yeah. This is not reality. Amen. It's not supposed to be our reality. Praise the Lord. Bible faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we don't have. Yeah. Now, I try to use that logic with anybody at the university. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Or at the quick trip, for that matter. Yeah. They're not buying it. No, They're saying, you're, 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 you're not dealing with reality. You're, you're, you're crazy. Yeah. No. The truth is, you're crazy. Yes. And I know the reason I know you're crazy is because you don't know you're crazy. It's like Catch-22. Anybody see the movie? <laughs> you know, the only way you could get out of flying these missions uh, in World War II was to be declared insane. But if you told them you were insane, you couldn't be insane. Because an insane person wouldn't know that they were insane. 
right? That was the catch-22. And they would never describe you as being insane because they needed somebody to fly the mission, right? And you say, but I am crazy. I'm going nuts. And they're saying, no, no, you're just trying to get out of flying a mission. That's the world. They're saying, you're crazy. And we're saying, no, no, here's, you don't understand. You're the one that's nuts. But you don't know that you're nuts, and that's why you won't say you're crazy. True. Because you are. <laughs> right? True. If you weren't crazy, it wouldn't matter. Right? I mean, it's, it's crazy, but that's the way it is. That's the way the world is. They're saying, you're nuts. You're crazy. And they were saying, no, no. We're the ones that are saying it's you that are nuts. Yeah. No kidding. Praise the Lord. John 15, verse 7. This, so, <laughs> praise the Lord. Oh, I'm just thinking, if this was a room full of unbelievers, see, they would be scratching the yeah. stained glass off the windows and you know, calling 911 for some mental assistance. <laughs> but here's what Jesus, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it will be done for you. Yes. Huh? That's God. Now, how can that not be true? Right? Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. He's telling us how, this is how it works. If my words abide in you, you will ask what you will based on my word, and it will be done. It will be done unto you. Now, that, can't, that has to be true or else God is a liar. And I don't care how many times people say, oh, well, I, try, I tried that, and I, it didn't yeah. work. No, you tried. You tried, and that's why it didn't work. This is something you've got to do. You, you don't try this. You've got to yeah. do this. Right. And like Don was saying, it may, it may take a lifetime. Yeah. Right. We think, whoa, everything is you know, fast food here for us. In fact, I get mad at McDonald's if there's two cars in front of me. Yeah. So I'm thinking, this ain't fast food. I could have went in somewhere and got this, you know. Yeah. I'm only eating it because it's quick. I mean, I don't like it. It's just something i got to eat, and so fast. And I'm thinking, well, I could lose it right here. I want to back out and run into somebody and say, fast food my foot. I'm angry. I'm an angry individual, praise the Lord. But for as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Amen. In fact, what he's saying is, tell me what I'm telling you. I don't want to hear your excuse. I don't want to hear your complaint. I want to hear what I said. You say what I said, and you'll get what I said. You say what you're saying, and you're going to get what you're saying. Right? So he's just saying, if you're going to talk, talk what I'm talking. Because that's the only way you're going to get out of the mess that you're in. If you keep repeating what you've already got, you're just going to get more of it. Yeah. Amen? So Matthew uh, 16, verses 21 through 23. Now look at this. And this is the perfect example. Well, first of all, we know that Jesus is the Word. And, we know, and, and, and what Tammy said is so true. He just went about connected to God. Yeah, he did. So he didn't let the world influence him. He just heard what his father said. He didn't hear what everybody else was saying. He didn't listen to what everybody else was saying. He listened to what his father was saying, and that's what he would say. So from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Yeah. So what was Jesus saying? He's rebuking Peter because he wasn't speaking the things of God. Right? right? right. What was Jesus hearing? He was hearing Peter say something contrary to what God had said. Mm -hmm. Amen? And so, in essence, he told Peter, Shut up. Your words are contrary to mine. Yeah. Amen. And you're being a temptation to me to believe something other than what God has said. Yes. Now, how many of y'all yeah. ever had a conversation with somebody and you just want to run? Because they're undermining everything that you believe. 
You want them to be convinced, as you are, yeah. that God has the answer for them, but all they want to do is keep spewing back at you, yeah. well, but that ain't what happened to me, and look what this thing is, and look what that thing is, and you just go, oh, my God, get behind me. Yeah. I don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So Peter was speaking the wrong language. He was speaking the language of the world, of what he could see and what he thought he could do. Amen? And later, Peter refers to this Satan that Jesus told him, called him, get behind me, Satan. You're trying to tempt me to believe something other than what the Word of God says. Later, Peter refers to him as the adversary. Amen? Yeah. Jesus wasn't his problem. What Jesus was going to do wasn't the problem. The problem was he was listening to the wrong voices. Yeah. Amen? 1 Peter 5 and 8, this is where Peter says, your adversary, the devil, goes about seeking whom he may devour. He tried to destroy Peter. He tried to, amen. Peter thought he was doing a good thing. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Adversary, which is an opponent, amen. And so Satan is the one who speaks opposite of what God says. That's why Jesus calls him the liar and the father of liars. Yeah. Every time he opens his mouth, yeah. it's a lie. Why? Because it's always contradicting what God has said. That's how we know that it's a lie. Yeah. Amen? And so Satan, the, uh, the goal is, uh, of Satan is to feed you words that are contrary to God's words. Yeah. Amen? To get your attention off of what God says and onto your situation or your circumstance or something that somebody else is trying to feed you. Amen? And thereby producing faith for destruction, faith for death, faith for lack, faith for loss. Amen? That's what he's doing. He understands how this thing works. And so he comes for the word of God. And how does he come for the word of God? By giving you a false word, a word that is, yes. is opposite of what God is saying. And hoping that you'll buy into that. And when you do, you get the results that, he, that you could have gotten from God's word if you would have stood by it. But instead, by backing off, you get the results that the devil wants, which is being robbed of everything God has planned for you. And then he can say, see, God didn't do it. God didn't do anything for you. God can't do anything for you except that you submit to the Word. What does he say? Submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to the Word of God and he'll flee. Because yes. he's got no argument against the Word. He has to get you away yes. from the Word to believe something yes. in the natural realm. The truth. Yep. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. That's why it comes about seeking whom he may devour. Yes. And he devours it with lies. Anything contrary to the Word of God. Think of this. I'm going to quit. One more scripture here. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. We're supposed to declare that constantly because we know there are constant messages coming to us. Amen. Saying, no, you're not. I mean, I heard that. I, I heard that thought you had. You didn't say it, but I heard it. And you're none of that. Amen. But let the weak say I'm strong. Amen? The poor, that I'm rich. Yes. The sick, right. by his stripes I was healed. Amen? Yes. The, the, those that are devastated. Amen? I will rise up on wings yes. of, eagle, of eagles. Amen? Yes. I'll run and not be weary. I'll walk and not faint. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Romans 4.17. This is the last scripture. By his stripes you were healed. Yes. That is right. Romans 4.17. As it is written. I have made thee a father of many nations. This is talking about Abraham. Before him, whom he before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So as it is written, he's talking about Abraham. I have made thee a father of many nations. That's what God told to Abraham. And what did God do with Abraham? Because there wasn't the word as we have it today. Obviously, it hadn't been written. So he had direct contact with God. So how does God get a, something to him that will cause him to confess the truth? Yeah. He gives him a different name. Yeah. So that every time he opens his mouth and he says, uh, who, who's this guy coming? Abraham. Mm -hmm. Father of many nations. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. He just gave him his word. Yeah. And forced him into a situation to now, now, whenever there were people around, whenever there was anybody within hearing distance, What's his name? Who is that guy? What's this? That's Abraham, the father of many nations. And they would look, believe me, 
They had to mock him. They had to laugh at him and think, Father of many nations, this guy's 75 years old. He doesn't have any kids. His wife's barren. You know they laughed. Maybe not to his face because he's a fairly wealthy man. Had probably had some influence. Yeah. But behind his back, they had to be mocking him all the time. What a jerk. 25 years. I've been around. I've, ever since I've been an adult, I've been hearing this Abraham, father of many nations. I ain't seen squat. No kids except that. B-A-S-T, that yeah. came by some other woman that he got wrapped up with. You know, they'll start finding all the reasons and all this other stuff. And God said, just keep saying what I say. Yep. And it became an even greater impossibility for this to come to pass. Yeah. But the fact that he kept saying what he yeah. said made it all the more glorious when it happened. Yes. And all these people that have been laughing behind his back, all these people that have been pointing their finger at him and talking about him, and what a jerk, what a fool. Yeah. They got to shut up and eat crow. Yes, they do. Because if it had happened at 75, they might have said, well, it's some kind of genetic glitch here. Somehow, sometimes, every once in a while, you'll hear of a woman who's 60 years old that gets pregnant, you know, and so on and so forth. It's rare, but it does happen. And that's what they would have tried to do. I'm sure they'd say, well, you know, it's just kind of weird, but it, it happens sometimes. But 100? Uh uh. And even living at 100, let alone reproducing. So. You know, that, that's how God does it. He does it in a way so that nobody can deny it. Nobody can argue it. That had to be God. That had to be a miracle. That had to be what God said it was going to be. Or it would have never happened. So I'm just saying, keep, keep believing. Keep speaking. Speak God's word for increase, for blessing, for health, for favor, for the God kind of faith. Amen? And all things are yours in Christ, the word, in God and of God. That's the promise. That's the reality. All, the only discipline we have is to set a watch over our tongue yep. so that we're not saying crap that we don't want, so we're not right. cursing ourselves right. and others. Tim says it all the time, and it's so absolutely true. It's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. You little idiot, you'll never amount to anything. You're a lazy little jerk. You know, you won't do what, anything you're talking about. This is a parent talking to their child or, or an adult talking to a young person. What, and then why does it surprise us that the kid turns up to be a three-time felon, you know, or, you know, a, a, a th stealing cars or shooting at people? Why? Because we've convinced them that's what they are. They, they, we, they keep hearing it and hearing it and hearing it, and unless there's some intervention, they're going to believe it at some point, and they're going to start acting out that reality yeah. or that lie, in fact. Our prisons are filled yeah. with men and women that could very well be the greatest influences in our, in our society. Had they just simply been raised by somebody who would have spoke positive to them and embraced you know, their differences and so on and so forth and just said, you're, you're going to do exceeding abundantly above anything in anybody in your class. You're going, to be, you're going to do things that you can't even imagine. It's in you to do that. You can do it. And that kid, they're going to be looking for opportunity. I mean, that's the way they are. You think about just little kids and when our grandkids are over and I'm telling them, oh, that was really cool. You'd, and I mean, you've got to be careful because they're jumping off the deck into a snowbank and, and Colt's wanting to do flips and this kid will, you know, he's just... I'm saying, just, you know, be careful. You could land on your head, you know, and then I'm thinking, oh, just shut him. Just yeah. let, him, let him go, praise the Lord, let him go. And, and that's really good. And the next thing you know, they're leaping and flying and doing, they just think they can because some adult said, yeah, yeah, that's good. You, you can do this, you know, you, you can make it, you know. And it's amazing what a little bit of positive yeah. input, you know, can, can do in a, in a person's life. Even for adults, Tim talking about the guy, and, I, and these things resonate with me. He's talking about this guy who was 50 years old or something, if I remember right. And, and somebody said, you can do this. You, you, can, you, can, you can succeed at this. And the guy's in tears. Yeah. Never heard anybody say anything positive to him about himself. Well, why are we so shocked that they grow up to be lazy slugs that don't want to do anything. Why? Because everything I do turns to crap, you know. There's, what's the point? Why try, you know? It ain't going to amount to anything. Just a little bit of it. And this is, see, this is how Jesus, and this is how God talks to us all the time. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I got your picture on my refrigerator, you know. Your little crude drawing is up there. I'm proud of you. That's, that's fantastic. You're going to be a great artist someday, you know. All the kinds of things. That's what God is saying to us is, man, you've got such potential. Nothing shall be withheld from you. If you can believe, 
All things are possible to those that believe. You can, be, you can overcome mountains. You can move mountains. You can say to, to, the, to the wind, cease, stop. I mean, if, you, if, if we raised our kids that way from the very beginning, imagine the culture that we would live in today. Yes. We would be influencing that culture instead of letting that culture try to influence us. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Say what God says. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Just keep saying what God says. It doesn't have to become a ritual, you know, a religious ritual that you go through. Just when the negative thing comes, yeah. just say the positive. Just respond to it. When he comes with a lie about you, no, no, nothing's ever going to come to this. You're a liar, devil. I'm going to be uh, super successful at this. God's going to give me everything that I need. And then some. And you're going to be leaving here like a rat with his tail between his legs. Amen. You're the liar. God is the truth. And that never changes. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Appreciate you coming out today. Stay safe. Be careful going out through the parking lot there. Watch your feet. God bless you all. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.